Hello, welcome to Blue House of Pearls online class. My name is Maya. Today we'll be drafting a basic bodice. Now, the measurements we need for our basic bodice are the shoulder measurement, the bust measurement, the waist measurement, the hip measurement, the round arm or the round arm pole, the round sleeve measurement shoulder to waist measurement and your blouse length okay now these measurements some are divided into two some are divided into four now your waist and hip measurement we divide into four because our fabric is folded into two now we have two layers or two panels the front panel and the back panel so the front panel is folded into two then the back panel will also be folded into two so we have four folds that's why we divide our measurements by four in case you'll be wondering okay i'll start by making a mark on the base of my fabric or the shoulder line or your starting point whichever one you decide to call it okay now i'll go ahead and mark my vertical measurements the vertical measurements are the measurements in length okay so from my shoulder to my chest line i'll mark it here now to determine your chest line we divide your round arm hole by two so our round arm hole for this illustration is 16 divided by two is eight so you mark eight inches then our shoulder to waist for this illustration is 15 so you mark 15 here then the length of the blouse you are working with for this illustration is 24 then you add two inches for sewing allowance you can decide to add one inch or one and a half inches depending on your preference so i'm going to take all these lines into a straight line okay Now, if you're wondering the amount of fabric to fold, you work with the highest measurement. So the highest measurement here is our hip measurement, which is like 8.5 divided by 4 gives us 9.6. Okay, so if you want to fold your fabric, you fold with the highest measurement. So 9.6 plus 2 inches sewing allowance should be what you work with. But please work with your own accurate measurement. Okay, this one is just for illustration purposes. Now, having marked out my vertical lines, I'm going to label them so we don't get confused. This is the shoulder line. Okay, this is the chest line. This is the waist line. This is the blouse length. Then this is our sewing allowance. I hope we got that correctly. Now, we'll go ahead to mark our neckline depending on the type of neckline you want okay so the standard neckline is three inches by three inches meaning three inches for the width then three inches for the depth so i'll mark three inches here for the width of my neck then four three inches again for the depth of my neck now this is a basic body that we're working with these three inches as a standard standard neckline is three inches by three inches like i rightly said but your preference matters so if you don't want a three inches wide neckline you can always do four 4.5 inches depending on how wide you want your neckline and you can also do four five six seven depending on how low you want your neckline okay but whatever neckline width you use for the front block you use the same for your back block if you're using three inches for the front block while you are drafting the back block you use three inches but for the depth it varies you can decide to do four inches for the front neckline and nine inches for the back neckline but the width remains the same okay now so if you want a circle neck or you want a u-shaped neckline okay this is our three by three inches okay if you want a u-shaped neckline you use your french curve 
from the neck width and make a curve to the neck depth. This is your U shape neckline. If you want a square neckline, this is your square neckline. Then, if you want a V neckline, you just mark a line from your neck width to the neck depth. Just a straight line. So when you cut this out, it gives you a V. When you cut this out, it gives you a U neck. When you cut this out, it gives you a square neckline. Okay, now the neckline area has been discussed. We'll go ahead to mark our shoulder. In our video on how to take measurement, I showed us how to take our shoulder measurement. So for this illustration, our shoulder measurement is 7 inches. So I'll mark 7 inches. We don't add to and allowance to our shoulder. Now, on the chest line, I'll also mark 7 inches. Because I want to get a straight line from the shoulder. Okay? I hope you got that. So let me make a broken line. Okay, for my shoulder line. Now, on the shoulder line, you come down by one inch. I'll tell you what that is for. So, when you mark the one inch, you connect it to the neck width. Now, this is called the shoulder slope. Okay, it's called the shoulder slope. Now, the reason why we slant our shoulder, it's called the shoulder slope or the shoulder slant. Like our shoulders are not straight, it's slanted. So if you cut along this line, just even it straight, your shoulder begins to look funny. It looks, it pokes out and looks funny. But when you slant it, the human body is not straight. So when you slant it, you have a perfect fit on your shoulder. Now, coming down to this place, you now measure what we have after the shoulder slip. You now measure the distance from the shoulder slope to the chest line okay let us measure here we have seven inches so we are going to divide seven inches into two which is 3.5 so this is our 3.5 don't get confused from the shoulder slope you measure the remaining distance you have for your chest line and we got seven inches divided by two is 3.5 okay now this is where we'll start marking our ample from but before i mark my ample i'll I'll impute my bust measurement. Okay, so our bust is 35 divided by 4 gave us 8.75. Okay, so on my chest line, on the chest line, this is the chest line where you impute your bust measurement. So on the chest line, I'm going to mark the bust measurement, which is 8.75. This is 8.75, okay, plus 2 inches sewing allowance. We need our allowance is very very important then on the waistline i will impute my waist measurement which is 32 inches divided by 4 gave us 8 inches okay plus 2 inches sewing allowance then on the blouse length we we'll mark our hip measurements on the blouse length because the your dress or your blouse, sorry, sits around your hip line. So if you mark your waist measurement there, it becomes tight. It becomes too tight for you to wear. So on the blouse length, which is around here, we mark our hip measurement. So our hip measurement for this is 38.5 divided by 4 gave us 9.6. Okay, this is 9.6. I'll still mark 9.6 on the sewing allowance. Then two inches sewing allowance. Okay, now there is something I will do on the waistline. Remember, we we'll add that. Okay, I'll introduce us to the that. We'll add a dart of one inch on the waistline. Okay, we we'll take our dart on the waistline. So because I'll be taking a dart of one inch, I'll add extra one inch to my waistline. Which is called the dark allowance. Okay, don't get confused. Now I'm going to connect my chest line to my waistline. Then the waistline to the blouse lines. Okay, now it's looking straight here, but by the time I take in one inch, it becomes curved. Okay, let's see for instance, without this, uh, this dark allowance, this is how my 
my measurement is going to look like my pattern is going to look like okay so it's curved in at the waist because you know from your from your bust you curve you have a slant into your waist then your hip comes out okay just like dra um, drafting a basic okay then your waist your hips okay so this is just a small illustration on a basic body or a basic dress your neckline your armhole your waist then your hips okay so this is how it looks like so i'll get back to the armhole i hope you've not gotten confused i'll go over it again okay so remember what we have here is 3.5 half of the distance from the shoulder slope to the chest line okay so with my french curve now the back armhole is longer is wider than the front armhole okay so because of that i'll come in by three quarter inch okay or if some people do half inch so let's say i come in by half inch okay or even three quarter depending on your preference so i'm going to connect from here to my original bust measurement so watch it that's why you need your french curve okay you see that curve now from here i also curve to the shoulder slope okay so my armhole is formed this place is not curved because this is the sewing around so you just sew on this part so pretty much our basic body is ready the only the only thing remaining is our dart. Now I'll show us how to calculate our dart. Now to get that, okay, you need your bust pan, your nipple to nipple measurement. That's the, 